Hi everyone and welcome to today's Physics Daily Booster. This is number 15 in our Paper 2 series. You'll notice that this isn't listed on the advanced information for either Foundation or Higher Tier Physics, but as we know there's that lovely little line on there that says there is no information that will not be assessed on this paper. Therefore we can safely assume there's going to be at least a question on this stuff somewhere. What we're going to do is we're going to venture out into space. So we are on the final part of P8, the 8.3 section, looking at space, the universe and everything. So let's start off with the beginning, the very beginning, in fact, the Big Bang Theory. I hope we know that the universe as a whole started as something incredibly dense and incredibly tiny, as in something smaller than an atom that then underwent this sudden expansion around 13.7 billion years ago. So a little bit of time had passed. And that's what we refer to as the Big Bang, this sudden expansion that came 13.7 billion years ago of something that was incredibly tiny and dense that then expanded out and is still expanding today. And we know that the space between the galaxies that exist is still expanding today based on observations and measurements that we have taken. We also know, contrary to what some people may believe, we are not the centre of the universe. We are just one little section on an edge. We are not at the centre of it whatsoever. So what evidence have we got for this? Because obviously, as with all things in science, there could be some people who say Big Bang didn't happen, full stop. We need evidence to actually back up our theory here. And we've got it. Two key pieces of evidence for the Big Bang theory. Number one, is this stuff called CMBR or cosmic microwave background radiation and number two is the process of red shift. Let's start with our CMBR, the cosmic microwave background radiation. This was something that we kind of discovered in the 1960s. Now what we know is that from the measurements that we have taken over time then microwave radiation comes from all directions. So because no matter where the scientists actually took these measurements, they were able to pick up this microwave radiation, then they came up with a theory that this was left over from the Big Bang itself. So what we started with was very high energy, high frequency radiation. So if we have a little look at our little diagram in the bottom here, what we have is high energy, high frequency radiation gamma rays over here. Now what we know is over time that radiation has been stretched. So when we've stretched it what we've actually done is we've increased the wavelength, decreased the frequency and we've ended up here in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So that should be familiar to us, radio, micro, infrared, visible, ultraviolet, x-ray, gamma rays, going back to our P5 work, that's just the electromagnetic spectrum. So we would have started off with something with much higher energy and frequency and over time that's been stretched and it's currently residing in the microwave region of the electromagnetic spectrum. So that's our first piece of evidence. That suggests that things are still moving away, hence the stretching side of things. The second key piece of evidence is what we refer to as red shift. So this was something that Edwin Hubble came up with in 1929. And what he actually did was he measured the speed of galaxies just by looking at the absorption spectra of the light that they, those individual galaxies were emitting. So what we know is this is, to all intents, something you can experience here on Earth. If you think about standing on a pavement as a police car, fire engine, ambulance, something with a siren goes past, the sound as it's approaching is different to the sound you hear as it moves away from you. It kind of sounds almost like there's someone sitting in there that flips a little switch to make it a different tone as they go past you. They're not. This is something we refer to as the Doppler effect. And it's all to do with what's happening to the actual wavelength and the frequency as it's moving towards you versus as it moves away from you. And this is very similar to what we see in terms of redshift. 
So if we've got something that is a stationary object, so our star is stationary, it's not moving whatsoever, then the wavelength will remain constant. But that's not what we see when we look at these different galaxies. Instead, what we see is some of them have got a longer wavelength and others a shorter wavelength. So what we can see there is some of these galaxies are moving away from us and others will be moving towards us. So what we can actually see is that as that light source is moving away from us, then the wavelength of light that it is emitting is going to increase and therefore the frequency will decrease. And this is red shift, because if we have a little look at our little wavelength here in the visible spectrum, then if we're going to see the wavelength increasing, if you can just make out the numbers here, then the red end is at 700, whereas we've got 400 at the bluer end. So if we increase the wavelength, what we're doing is we're moving it towards the red end of the spectrum, hence redshift. And any of those galaxies moving away from us are having the wavelength increase and therefore they are moving to the red end of the spectrum. They are undergoing this redshift. The faster it moves away from us, the bigger the redshift is. Conversely, if something is moving towards us and emitting light, then what we're going to see is the opposite effect. In that instance, then the wavelength is going to decrease and therefore it becomes blue shifted. So red shift moving away, blue shift moving towards us. What Hubble was able to do from his observations and measurements was show that these galaxies were moving away from us. And this gives us that key bit of support for the Big Bang. Because what we said was in the Big Bang, we started off with this very dense point that then basically expanded out very rapidly. And what we can say is that if these galaxies are still moving away from us, they are still undergoing that expansion. We are still seeing the after effects of the Big Bang itself. He also worked out that the more distant galaxies are actually moving away from us at a faster rate. And you can see that in this little graph he plotted down here. So you can see the distance on the x-axis and the speed away from us on the y-axis. And you get that positive correlation between them. So the further they are, the faster away from us they move. As always, if there are bits you'd like to go over in a bit more detail, you can use the P88 playlist on the channel. You can use your revision guides. And of course, have a look at some of the past exam questions on this topic, just to get a bit of a feel for the space questions they like to ask. Then don't forget to join us again tomorrow for our next Physics Daily Booster.